Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. And today I have a baker's dozen worth of pumpkins. They're so cute. I know, getting to be like a little bit of a repetitive thing here, but I made a whole bunch of, wo of wood pumpkins. So here's out of Dollar Tree wood and some free wood. So let's go through what we used. Everybody's seen these signs from Dollar Tree. These are pretty commonly used signs, seen them a lot. And then here's just some extra Dollar Tree wood pieces you can purchase. I got these at some point, they have them all different sizes. And this here is a dunnage block. And let me show you, dunnage blocks are used to protect materials during shipment. Basically the big pieces, the big flats of wood that come into your hardware stores, um, they come in on these with straps around them. And normally they throw these away. So I got, I think four or five of them and they're in really long strips. I got them at my uh, local Lowe's home improvement store. And I asked for them and they said, sure, you can have them for free. Now that little trick is uh, from, um, Holly at Hot Humble Pie, she's the one that had introduced me to the dunnage block and the fact that they throw them out and it should be free wood and she delivered. So everybody go over and say hi to her and thank her for that, that little tip. So what I did here is I went into my garage and I got my miter box out, which I've had minimal success using in the past, but I said, why not try it? I've had good luck with stencils and all kinds of stuff. So let's just see what happens. So here, I'm just taking different measurements of all of these different pieces of wood and I'm going to use my miter box and we're going to saw these in half. Now this has been sped up six times. So when it looks like I'm sawing it real, real fast, that's not realistic. It took a lot longer and a lot more of my arm power than I figured it'd need. Now these Dollar Tree, um, this Dollar Tree sign right here, I don't know that it's actually wood. I think it might be some sort of pressed cardboard, but in any event, it's a wood-like material and see the little sizing I got there? That was literally like a half and then half of a half. And I, I couldn't tell you because these things aren't exact with their measurements to begin with. Oh, everything from Dollar Tree is a different length or a different measurement. You guys know that from different boxes that don't fit together. But, no, that's great. That was my dog <laughs> right when I'm recording. That's wonderful, Tootsie. That's great. <laughs> they're all, anyways, back to basics. Uh, they're all just different sizes. Um, different lengths and, and nothing is exactly it's not eight inches it's seven and four quarters and sixteenths of an eighth of the nineteenth of a hundredth inches and stuff thanks that's the measurements so just do what makes you happy i just at this point was like well let me take a half of a half and half of this i wasn't necessarily trying to make like little block families or anything but here's the hard part now this dunnage block was obviously very thick wood and it's not a good quality wood because it's just meant to hold things but as you can see here my camera mount is attached to my table. And let me tell you, I was really sawing at this table. So you'll see my camera just flying everywhere. <laughs> and then I found like a little hole in the middle. It's kind of like something was living in there. It's kind of scary too. It's like, do you guys ever peel a potato and then inside the potato, there's a hole in it. And you're like, nope, something was living in this potato. I'm not gonna eat this part. So I end up cutting that whole piece of that potato out. And then I'm like, well, if there's not enough potato left, Anyways, I don't know how I got on the potato subject. Oh, because of the dunnage block. See, there's a little hole in there and something came out of it, but I just vacuumed it up and moved on. And now we're sanding everything down. <laughs> we're sanding down. We're moving on from our little something's living in the wood slash potato incident. <laughs> All this is an 80 grit sandpaper and I'm taking a lot of the rough edges off. The dunnage blocks are very, very rough, very rough. So, you know, sand as you see fit. I probably want to get something to remove that stuff in the future, maybe some sort of power sander if I continue this, but I'm having fun so far, so we'll see how it goes. Of course, I didn't take my labels off, so do the, doing that now. And now it is time to start painting. I had sort of a, not difficult time, but I decided to paint these things, just different things, different. I had an idea and then I, of course, none of it was really written down. So I kind of like started just painting things and then I forgot, oh no, wait, Whitney, you don't want to paint them all white. You want to paint some of them black, some of them orange. So that's what I did. This is my uh, folk art home chalk paint. Then this is a uh, Waverly chalk paint in uh, orange, which is called pumpkin, Waverly chalk paint pumpkin. And this uh, Waverly stuff is, I I'm forgetting, I use that folk art so much. Here's Waverly chalk paint in, in ink, which is black. They're much, much more smoother and I love it. And somebody recently commented in my videos, thank you by the way, that Waverly is coming back to their Walmart. So I need to go check mine because previously mine had disappeared. And this is right here, that's Folk Art Spanish Moss. I love that green color. And I forgot, to, I keep forgetting to order a bottle, but I need to. So that's this dunnage block, this one's for me. 
technically I, that's why i painted it the the spanish moss color so here now if you see i left a little spot on each one on the top raw wood and i'm going to use these little stems i bought these off of amazon because my dollar trees do not get those cute little wood stems everybody has so and like, trust me i have looked at many of them and uh, it's just not in my cards my my dollar trees don't want me to have them and it makes my heart hurt so uh, I bought some off of Amazon and we're using those. So I did a combination of wood glue and hot glue because we are putting wood to wood and then the hot glue will be immediate. So I left a little piece on the top of each one of these. You can see I, I left them unpainted. The second you put paint on there, now that one might not work just because that's already a painted piece of that Dollar Tree sign, but the rest of them are raw wood to raw wood. And that um, wood glue is, is basically very, very, very effective obviously it's called wood glue for a reason so i use a little bit of wood glue a little bit of hot glue on both and these all dried very well so i mean they all look really cute there's a couple i turned sideways and then here's just some more just showing you what they look like with their stems on and i did this in between so i could let them dry and um, then i can come back and just do this right here and to touch up the tops of each one I wanted to make sure that the wood glue had a chance to cure and dry and then also any other paint that I hadn't had, you know, hadn't let dry enough before I put those stems on. So basically did all that, let those sit, and then I went and I did my dinner. Then I came back in. So we're looking about like an hour and a half of curing time and I had no problems. So I'm just filling in all these spots. Now we're going to cover the tops of these with all types of like cute little accoutrement. You know how I do, you guys. I, I kind of just load the tops up with cute stuff so you can't even tell it's a pumpkin but first we're going to add some texture and some decoration so you guys have seen me use this one before these are all uh, chalk paste transfers these gray ones are from a maker studio so i got a buffalo check a ticking pattern you've seen me use the chicken wire and they're really nice transfers and then there's a really old um, chalk couture one underneath there you'll see me use that one just briefly so here is a it's a win because I'm telling you, if you've seen, if you saw the photos on Instagram or you see my thumbnail, you'll know these turned out beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I couldn't be more farmhouse happy than I already am. Uh, but you'll see right here, I left this in because this was my first go and I decided that I wanted the ticking pattern to go horizontal on the long one and then vertical on the shorter one. So I had to turn it a little bit sideways. So here's my first go. Now, again, you guys, I'm still inexperienced. I've only used these transfers once before, and it turned out so well with that chicken wire on that previous video where I did the chicken wire in the mason jar video. Look it, it didn't turn out. So grabbed a baby wipe, wiped it off, and then I set it aside, I'm gonna let it dry, and we're gonna go back at it and try again. I was thinking I probably didn't use enough chalk paint, and that's exactly what happened, is I wasn't using enough. I was really like putting just a tiny bit on and then scraping it off real hard, because I'm like, trying to be cheap with my chalk paste or something. I don't know. This is also, this is Maker Studio chalk paste. Um, it's a good chalk paste. I don't know if there's a preference, if anyone has a preference over any. I, I really literally couldn't tell you because I don't sell any of it. I don't have an affiliate with any of it. I'm just using it to see what I like, to see what's good. If you guys have a suggestion or you find something that works better, please add that to our comments. And we all love to share and learn from each other. We have a great community. So if you guys have any suggestions for this, please let me know. Now, the buffalo pattern one, buffalo check one. These ones turned out better. I seem to have more problems with black on white or white on black. I don't know what it is. But if you look at that little orange one up at the top there, it still had a little bit of like spacing on the one side that kind of looked like it still needed a little bit more paste. I mean, and I was loading this thing up with paste. It was kind of still kind of off on the sides, but uh, it just kind of chips off as soon as it's dry. And I'll show you guys that in a second. Now here's the really, this is probably like a five year old stamp or transfer. I literally never used it. It's a frame pattern, but I wanted to, I wanted the flowery part of it. So never let what your pattern looks like hinder you. Look how cute that turned out with this, those little leaves and stuff on there that could literally just apply to any, any season. Now I, this is where I'm getting my block, my black chalk paint out and I'm gonna put the buffalo check on a white block. The one we just did previous was a black block with white buffalo check. Obviously we can all see that. Just kind of jibber jabber in here. But this one turned out really good too. First go around, look at that. So they're just, I love it. I absolutely love it. And so far I'm liking the white with the black on it. So now because this stuff can still come off with water or moisture, I'm gonna seal them all on the tops with Mod Podge. And I just put a coat, one coat. It wasn't like a thick, heavy handed or anything like that. Um, it was just a coat of Mod Podge on the, on the front of each one. 
it seems as though it was going to like smear but it's not i'm just if you're used to mod podge then you'll know but i'm not so i got a little concerned that it was going to start like reactivating the paste but it didn't i was um like okay well i got a really good lines now of course you didn't see me do the chicken wire but you can see there's two chicken wire pumpkins there um, it's the exact same process that you guys watched me do on the other ones but i have used that chicken wire transfer in another video so it was a success i knew it would work and I really, the way that long one turned out with the ticking on it, you guys, so cute. All right, so that while those are drying from the Mod Podge, while I had my Mod Podge out, I said, you know what? Let me go grab a couple more of these blocks and I'll go get the pumpkin napkin I used in another video because I have a lot, obviously I have a 50 count pack of napkins. <laughs> so I'm going to do the same technique I used on my other pumpkin video where I used some Dollar Tree wood and created a pumpkin out of the three ovals. And this one turns out really good too. So I just put one layer down and I used a brayer or a roller and I only did the one layer and I'm letting that dry. So now with another piece of napkin, I'm going to cut out a pumpkin and I'm going to cut out a sunflower. So if you've got some good scissors, make sure you get your sharp fussy cutting scissors out because eh, I think I did a decent job with my regular scissors, but let me tell you, these scissors need to be retired, Whitney. We'll talk about that later. So I got those two cut out and I wanted to just add a little bit of detail on this one, but not necessarily the exact same thing as the taller one to the left. So I just added that to the side after I put a layer down of each and I'm gonna brayer or use the roller over to these two. And then after they're dry, then we're gonna take our finger sander and we're gonna take off the extra around the edges. And it comes off so easily. It's just, it's it's, it's literally nothing, nothing to just to pull it off. And so now that they're, of course, we waited until they were dry. So now I'm putting the extra layer on the top to seal it in. No bubbles, no wrinkles, no nothing. And you guys will see in about a second, I'll show you here once it's dry, um, how it looks. You can see off to the side, I got them sitting over there, they're drying. So here's this little tiny white one. And now we're going to use these rub-on transfers that I have gotten from Dollar Tree. Now you saw me use a little fall one in my live stream but I wanted to add some of these mixed together for this little guy here. So I'm gonna do just another little, it's just another uh, way to customize something. So I've got Mod Podge, I've got paint tran or, you know, chalk, not chalk, yeah, chalk paste transfers. Now I'm doing rub-on transfers. So I was obviously wanted to stick a little bit with the orange, so I didn't use any of the blue pumpkins, but I got a little orange pumpkin from the one set. And then the rest of them all came from that fall set. So I know I wanted to keep them together I wanted to use that hello autumn so I cut it in half because I'm going to change the layout the way it was on the sheet was cute but it wouldn't fit the way I want to use it so never let that you know hold you back either remember you can cut anything into pieces and lay it out the way you choose to and then I thought I was done with it here because look how cute it is it's so cute I mean, you guys could probably, we could even do this with Jeng, like full-size Jenga box. Think about that too. And then you don't have to do any of the, you know, manual cutting or anything. So I, I felt like it needed a little bit more. I cut off a couple more pieces of just, you know, small little cute thingies, doodads and thingamajigers just to add to it. So I wanted it to scream more fall. I wanted to just say autumn right in your face. Yeah, exclamation point. Hello, autumn. <laughs> so here, check this out. Look. No bubbles, no wrinkles, no nothing. I think that brayer had a lot to do with it. So here, I'm gonna show you that again. Same thing over here. No issues with the Mod Podge. I'm, 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 you know, knocking on wood, guys. Knocking on wood. Not gonna say anything about it. I don't know if it's a technique or not, but we're gonna leave it. We're just, we're just gonna move on and say, look how pretty it is. So I've got my uh, Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm just gonna age these a little bit. And I dry brushed all over them pretty heavily. And then of course, with the baby wipe, you can wipe most of it off and just make sure it leaves a good little aged, I guess an aged residue, an aged tone behind. I want it to look like it's been sitting out and that it's kind of a little dirty, or for lack of a better word, uh, we'll say uh, vintage. That's more home decor, not like, I want it to look dirty, like it hasn't been washed in years. That might not be a good word to use for home decor, Whitney. Okay, cool. So with the napkin, now remember, all this has a Mod Podge layer just, <clears throat> excuse me, just on the top layer. So that Mod Podge is still going to ad adhere, you know, the chalk paint will stick to it, our antique wax will stick to it. It's not going to come off, it's just there to seal in what's below it. So now we're going to start decorating the tops of these girls. I just grabbed my Dollar Tree twine. Now that's jute twine you can get in the automotive section. I get the three pack from the automotive area because you get more of it. 
and then I grab some Spanish moss and I'm just going to add that around the top to kind of just hide a little bit of the behind the scenes. Now see, look, I probably didn't have to go in and, and meticulously paint the tops of every single one of these because I cover the majority of them in Spanish moss. The black and white set you guys will see at the end, that's the last set that I show you. I didn't use any moss on those, but you'll see what happens. They're very, very cute. So here I thought I was done and I moved on to my little one and then I was like, well, let me go look, uh, see if I have some bows already made. So here's my junk bucket and I'm looking for stuff in here and I didn't find a bow that I like. So I was like, you know, this one's tiny enough. Let's just leave it without a bow. So I put the Spanish moss around the little base of our stem, gave it a little haircut so it wasn't too crazy. And I added a leaf that this is off of a, a, a Hobby Lobby bush. Just find some sort of pick that you can pull the leaves off of. They're like a foamy leaf. And then I thought, you know, it still needs something to look like a pumpkin. Oh yeah, Whitney, um, tendrils. Everybody needs those little cute curly cute little vines that come off of punkies. So I grabbed some green wire. This is regular 22 gauge wire. Um, and I curled it around my paintbrush and I made a little curly cute tendril out of it. And then I glued it on and it's like, Whitney, how can you for I, I was very mad at myself look how cute it is oh that tendril like that that's that's right that seals it for me that just makes me want to hug it makes me want to smile it's like almost when you get sour candy and you can't control how you're smiling and or actually you know you're in pain but still beauty is pain right <laughs> so then i thought well yeah um you forgot the other one so i grabbed a bigger paintbrush this time wrapped that green wire around so i kind of have this set sort of like matching a little bit. So here they look with now the tendrils right there. I can't believe I forgot it on the first one. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I take ownership of that. That is totally, I, I don't know what it was. I was probably really tired and just thinking, wow, who told you to do 13 pumpkins, Whitney, and then try to think that you were gonna get this. And I thought I was gonna add more to a video. Yeah, this video is just pumpkins, guys, which I'm not mad about. <laughs> So this right here was a bow I made for a previous project that didn't work out. So I took it apart and it's basically um, some old raffia that I had gotten off of a package and some pieces of a burlap ribbon that had been unraveled. I used the, the little threads that come off of it and I added it to the raffia, but it was too big of a bow. So I took it apart. I uh, basically only used half of it. Then I retied it around the stem and now I'm using the same little leaves and I'm just tucking those in with a either a poker something plastic you could use a skewer or a popsicle stick but what i'm doing is i'm using that piece of of the little tool there to kind of tuck things in while the glue is hot and it really adds you know it helps shape things into a specific you'll feel it as you're pressing things in you'll know when the glue is still very hot and how much room you have to kind of tuck things in and then for this one i used a, a, a bigger handle a paintbrush I, normally i use a um a, just a regular glue stick but for this one, I use some paint brushes because it's a thinner wire. Usually I'll use a glue stick if it's the, um, you know, the Pitberry garlands, which I use soon. Now I tried to sand that right there. If you caught that, sorry guys. And then forgetting that this was originally, these bigger ones were the Dollar Tree sign and it was that sea foamy green color underneath. Yeah, you can't do that Whitney. So in any event, I'm glad I did that and messed it up because I think they turned out great after I started using the white chalk paint. So I'm adding a distressing kind of dry brush to it. Now, if you're not a dry brush person, skip this step, but also don't sand it if it's a different color underneath there. Cause you know, mint, minty green pumpkin edges, not cool. <laughs> so now that one I put a little bit too much on, you'll see baby wipe took it right off. Now we have Mod Podge on the top of all of them. So you don't have to worry about messing up your chalk transfers underneath. We're good to go. So for our first one, do you see these beads here? These beads came off of the sunflower picture I made in my previous video. That was a uh, clearance picture decor that I got at Hobby Lobby for $3.25 from $12.99. It had those beads hanging in it. And this is a perfect example of saving your goodies, putting them in a junk bucket and using them in your next project. So I just took five of the eight beads. I put them on some jute twine, tied a knot three times. Then I put glue on that knot so that bottom bead is glued to it. And I just tied it around the top and I twisted some extra around the top there because we're not going to use Spanish moss on these. These are just going to be twine and some good stuff. So, um, 
I forget if I used, oh, I used pit berries on these. That's what it is. I used pit berries. So it is going to cover some more of the back of this, of the uh, stems. That was a hand bow with jute also wrapping it around my, all five fingers, or sorry, all five, all four fingers about maybe six times and then securing it in the middle. And here's where I was telling you my technique before. This is normally what I always do. You get the pit berry garland and I take a glue stick and I just twist it around there kind of push it together and then pull the whole thing off and you've got a perfect little curly cue of tendrils and then i just tied it around the stem like you would you know a twist tie on a loaf of bread you ever notice you guys i can i can bring everything back to food like seriously i'm like loaf of bread and earlier I <laughs> earlier i talked about potatoes yeah actually i'm kind of hungry dinners in 10 minutes we'll see how it goes <laughs> so that's how i did that one and here i'm showing you these these bows were also in my junk bucket those are finger bows i have a finger bow tutorial link below if you want to see that slowed down but i did all these with the same thing so the same premise so everybody has pit berries the same pit berry garlands or tendrils and then I use those extra finger bows on two of them, and then the other ones have twine. So you got a, a cute little set that they all look great together, but then they all can be, you know, they can all be done separately. For some reason, this one right here with the beads hanging on it is my favorite, my absolute favorite, and I don't know why. I think the beads, I'm like, I'm stuck on these farmhouse beads this year. And then there's our decoupage napkin, turned out great, absolutely great, just a little bit different. And I, I couldn't be happier with that raffia bow that kind of turned out too even though I had to take one apart to make it. So basically I get two bows out of it now. And here's the other three beads. So I had a total of eight beads. So I used five on one and three on a smaller one with that little chicken wire guy right back, back there. And then the ticking stripe and another little baby chicken wire one. I just, I love the whole set. You guys tell me what you think. So I've got two other kinds too coming up here, but oh, don't forget our little Hello Autumn girl. She's so cute. Love it. Absolutely love it. Also, you cannot cut those stems with the, with miter shears because I tried and yeah, it crumbled. So FYI. <laughs> so now my two little dunnage block babies. I was going at this one with my antique wax. That's Waverly antique wax. And I kind of made mud. You guys, I, was, I wasn't happy with this one, but I am with the end results. So just stick with me and you'll see. So for a second, it looks like I'm done here. And I have a feeling it's because my brush was dirty. I hadn't cleaned that brush. I was trying to create a crusty brush that you can use for dry brushing, but apparently it reactivated some of the old paint and it just kind of turned into mud. It was like a weird, like grayish color. It wasn't cute. This is a, just a, um, an artificial leaf I took off of a bush. That's a piece of Dollar Tree lace ribbon that I just had in my junk bucket extra, all extras. Uh, now for the leaf, if you saw there, I had a cut out. I cut out the center of it so I could nestle it up closer to the stem. That's always a good uh, idea to try if you want something to get closer. And then that is um, the leaves I've been pulling off this whole time come off of these little pieces here. I just did like a little tendril out of that. Just wrap that around my, uh, my little um, poker tool, that little pink tool there, wrap that around it and put that up top and I set it to the side. Now I'm not done with it because I wasn't happy at the end of this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now the green one is my baby. I just love green guys. And this, this Spanish moss folk art paint, this color is, I'm just, I'm loving it. I'm feeling it. I don't remember what I was digging for in my junk bucket here. But whatever it was, I didn't find it. <laughs> so I have this other Pitberry garland. This came from Hobby Lobby a couple years ago. But you guys see these every year. Actually, it might have been Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has Pitberry garlands every year at Christmas and fall. You'll see them out in different colors. Grab them up when you can. Otherwise, uh, Hobby Lobby carries them in, in bigger in bigger spools. It costs a little bit more. But, you know, to it is what it is. Pick what you make. Now, this finger bow I've already made. This is my favorite Dollar Tree ribbon ever. And I can't find it anymore. I love that farmhouse ribbon. And so that's it. I wasn't really happy. So I grabbed my cashew color Waverly chalk paint and I just started dry brushing towards the bottom of this. And I wasn't intending on going all the way to the top, but then I kind of went a little crazy. I just think that it makes it. And now that we pick the orange one back up, I am super happy with it. Like it needed that cashew. It needed more, something brighter. I think the, the other color for the antique was just making it look a little bit too dreary. But I think that cashew chalk paint at the end is what really made these two. I, I love them. And again, this was free wood, guys. This was stuff that was going to go in the trash. So you can either pick it up for firewood, but these dunnage blocks, hardware stores throw them out. Ask them if you can have them. I have four more in my, in, I mean, I have a lot of them. So we'll see if what other else, what other stuff I can come up with them <laughs> to use them for. You know what I mean? All right. Now our last set, these girls here, 
and this is for my black and white folks i know all you guys had really loved that video of the black and white pumpkin stuff that i did a couple like two videos back i was not i don't know why i didn't think of it everybody loves this stuff buffalo check is life all right i saw that in the comments a few times buffalo check is life but just black and white in general and you can add any color to it so i started just to dry brush these now I have two buffalo checks, a chicken wire, and then I did that pretty little floral pattern on this little, the littler pumpkin that's going to be horizontal. Now this one at the very end, I did a little bit more heavy handed on it. I want it to look very, very aged, but this is basically, I put black distressing on the white block and then white on all three of those other black blocks. And it adds just a little bit more texture. And now we're going to decorate the tops of them. So I've got some Dollar Tree cotton twine, a gray and white twine. And then this is also a doc, uh, um, that's not Dollar Tree. That I got off of Amazon. It's a black twine that I purchased for a, uh, um, a, a wreath I made years ago. And now this is a grow grain ribbon that I've had in my stash for a while. I got it at Michael's years ago. But you can find grow grain ribbon everywhere. It's I think it's three eighths of an inch. I'm not sure. And then I have white wire. This is something I purchased at Michael's many years ago during Christmas. But I have some white wire. And this Michael's one doesn't tell me what gauge it is. So it's a pretty thin gauge. But we're going to use that for the tendrils on these guys because we got a black and white theme. So our first one here, I'm not going to do much to it. The other one literally just had Spanish moss, a tendril, and a leaf. So for this one, I'm just going to do a... Um, a little twine bow so I wrap that around my fingers a few times and then now I'm showing you instead of just tying a knot around it I'm doing like a macrame kind of thing and I don't know what this is I don't know if this is a slip knot I don't know what this is called there's a name for this knot but I'm just taking the loop and putting the tails through the loop on the other side it is the easiest way to make this and also this twine was very very soft so it's a little bit difficult to work with it doesn't stay up so it you know you, if you make your loops a little bit too big it could be a little droopy if you want droopy then go for it i think it would be cute just kind of spilling over the edges but we had that cute little decoration up top that we didn't want to hide so i just kind of wrapped it around the base to kind of cover up some of the glue that may have squished out and dried and then placed my bow on the front cut the little little edges off there and i'm tacking it down right there so that you can see it and i'm thinking oh yeah i'm done here like no whitney you're not done tendrils your favorite part i don't know you guys i was really tired again 13 pumpkins in one night i don't know what your girl was thinking but she wasn't thinking about i don't know going to bed anytime soon <laughs> So these were my last ones I did, but the little white tendril, look at, it's just very, very simple. And for me, you guys, that's, you know, I'm extra. I do way more than I'm supposed to. And I add stuff. I make bows too big. Sometimes I put too many florals in, but I, I love that. That's just twine and a tendril. So moving on to our taller ones here, I'm just going to create a bow out of the black cord. And again, I got that off Amazon years ago, but it's just a black jute cord. And for this one, I wanted to leave extra tails long. So I just tied an extra piece of strands around the stem and left those tails long. And then the tails that I already had on the bow I created, they're there too. So I got about four tails you can see here that kind of hang down and just kind of make the project look pretty, almost like a, a Christmas like a Christmas or a birthday present. I love leaving uh, tails on packages and curling them. Now this, you can, obviously you're not curling ribbon, but the way they kind of look wavy and the way they sit there just makes me happy. And for this one, I added a second set of tendrils to the side. Now these ones are a little bit not, they're, the, the curly cue isn't as tight on the, the coiling. Let's put that, the coil isn't as tight, but it adds, I think, a little bit more. It just makes it a little bit different. Just add whatever makes you happy, whatever makes your heart happy, because you can start feeling the excitement. At least I do. I feel the excitement bubble up and I just can't say no. And I know exactly when I'm done with it. And then of course I kind of bent that one to the right. And now for these two, I added some burlap issue, uh, not issues, some burlap accents. So I, I took a strip and I started to fray it. And then all the pieces, I'm like, I can use these pieces too. So I kind of folded it in half and I'm using it almost like a leaf or a, a, a flower petal. And then from here, I added um, some of that grow green ribbon. I'd almost forgot about it and I made a finger bow. Now, guys, I have a finger bow tutorial linked in my um, description of the video below. It is a slowed down video, shows you how to do single, double, and multiple loops. And it's a very nice video for instruction purposes. If you have a problem or you struggle with them, I trust, trust me and I promise they get easier, just practice. And I have a video separate for that that I'm sure you will love and you'll find much easier to use. So take a look at that if you wanna see how to do these finger bows because I love them. I think they're the perfect size and they always add that perfect little classic bow to anything and just love it. Also, I cut things off at a diagonal with the, the longer points to the middle 
I don't know why I like that pattern. It's just something I do. And then of course I, I kind of use some a lighter to kind of melt the ends there so that the ribbon doesn't fray on us. Um, I already added my tendrils and here I wanted to add more. So I just cut another strip and I kind of pushed it into the glue from the bottom side to get that loop to sit up more. So it almost looks like there's a burlap bow on it. And then I got excited and moved on. And I'm like, Whitney, show them the bow, show them the punky before you move on. So this is me slowed down. There's That's what that one looks like at the end. Just a cut some burlap, a tendril and you know, girl green bow couldn't say no so here i literally just wrapped one of the strands around the bundle of the other strands that we had taken off from the pieces that we took off of the of the burlap and then here i'm literally just tying a knot in a strip of girl green ribbon i cut a strip of ribbon i tied a knot in itself that is it there's no bow but it looks like a bow and sometimes you guys keep it simple silly keep it simple it just doesn't usually come <laughs> doesn't usually compute with me. Normally I'm like, no, must have more, must add more. But I love the fact that it's technically not a bow, but it's a bow. If you guys feel me, let me know. You know it's a bow. It's not a bow, but it's a bow, you know? <laughs> so I added my tendrils um, and more, again, putting the, the wire on a pencil or, that's my Scooby-Doo pencil, by the way. That Scooby-Doo pencil been me forever. And that's it for that one. It's a little skinny one, but it's it's effective. And I, I love how these girls turned out too. What do you guys think? So this is more of the uh, fall black and white. It's not necessarily traditional. And if you don't know that it's a bow or you don't know that it's a pumpkin, now you know. And, it, and beauty's in the eye of the beholder. It also depends on how you interpret it and how you feel it looks for you. But you guys let me know what you think of these, all these cute little baker's dozens. Baker's dozen of punky goodness. I had so much fun making them. Um, and that's it for today, guys. So I wanted to put more into a video, but I didn't realize how long this would be just for this for these pumpkins. But I got a lot more pumpkins planned, so stay tuned. I have many, many more pumpkin videos coming at you. And I only got a specific amount of time before I can't do pumpkin videos anymore, right? But thank you guys so much. Um, with all that said, that's that's it for today. So thank you all so much for all of your support all of everything you guys do every day i get a wonderful comment and every day somebody's making somebody else smile you guys do that with me thank you to, to everyone for my you know supporting me on my coffee page and just being here and being you so take care of yourselves and each other you're doing a great job of that and many hugs happy crafting and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye